Hello, I'm Dylan Henson from the Product Innovation Team, and today I'm here to show you how to batch overlaid histograms in Flojo, as well as set sample as a control before batching overlaid histograms. So in general, the process of batching overlaid samples is a little different than the process of batching normal samples. When batching multiple samples, we need to somehow tell Flojo what we're going to batch. The easiest way to do that is to set up a panel. And so I'll show you how to do that in just one second. First, I just want to mention, I've done all my gating in my workspace already. I've set up this graph here of a sample a parameter that I'm interested in, and I have multiple histograms for it, comparing multiple different conditions in the same group. And so I, I like this histogram made a lot. You can see I offset the histogram using the histogram offset options down here. I also formatted things the way I like them. I overlaid multiple populations. You can see the four populations I overlaid listed here. And so now I'm ready to make this same graph, but for the rest of the groups in my workspace. And the fastest way, of course, to do that is to batch. But how am I going to batch this? So I'm going to batch it is I'm going to go up here to my iteration, my batch tab under the layout editor tab here. I'm going to go select here and choose the group that I'm in, which is the experiment group. I'm going to choose my panel here. And what panel is, is it's just looking at this group, and it's going to take the top four, in this case, samples. So if I set my panel to a smaller number, like one, it's just going to take the top sample and do it four times. That's kind of silly. I don't really want that. If I set it to two, it's going to choose two samples. Three, it's going to use three samples. And then four, of course, it's going to choose the top four samples. That's what I want. Now, this only works if the way your workspace is organized is such that it has, from top to bottom, the order that you want it in. And it can be really, there's other ways to batch too, but this can be a really convenient way of doing it if you just have, like, for instance, the file's names are in such a way that when it's in alphabetical order, as it is here, it's in the order that I'm going to want to batch it in. The other option is if you make a custom keyword, which you can do under the workspace tab here, you can add a keyword, and you can use that keyword to give different numeric values to the different samples, and then you could order it based off that keyword so that from top to bottom it has the order you want it in. But I have it in the order I want it in the alphabetic order is great. So I have this all set up, ready to go. Batching by panel using four different samples. This looks great here. I'm going to go ahead and hit batch. I'm going to hit create batch report in a new layout. And perfect, this is what I want. So you can see here, here's my first group, the LD1 group. Perfect, there's what's four plots. Goes LD2. LD4, LD12, and LD14. All grouped together, all plotted together. Perfect. That's what I want to see. So this is exactly what I wanted. But what if, twist, there's also a control I want to include in each of the samples, and that control doesn't change. Maybe it's an FMO. Well, I have that case. So you can see here, I go into my control layout. Here's an FMO control I'm going to want to include with each of the graphs. But this control isn't changing each time I didn't record multiple FMOs. So I'm going to use the same FMO every time to compare it against these samples. OK. So what, I'm going to, what I did was I set up the same histogram. I used these four graphs as I did last time. And then I drag and dropped an FMO from a different group into this graph. So now I have these all set up. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to do the same thing, but first what I'm going to want to do, I'm going to want to go here, right click, and set that FMO as a control. I've already done that, but I can do it again. So here it's not set. Right click, set as a control. And now if I zoom in, you'll see it's italicized, which means it's the control. It's slightly different by italicizing it. Um, so now it's going to be set as a control. And it's not going to change when I batch. It's going to be the same in each graph. So if I go up here, I'm going to change my group back to the experiment group. No, my FMO is not in that experiment group. That's fine. It's the control. I don't need it to be iterating across it because it's not changing. So I don't really want it to be in my experiment group. I'm going to iterate by panel again. Set my panel to 4 because that's the number of things that are changing. And you can see here it looks good to go, right? Like here's my FMO. And here's my panel for exactly how I want it. Perfect. Now, if we go ahead and hit batch, going to do it in rows of one again, just the same as last time in a new layout. 
create batch report. And here we go. So you can see it's exactly as I want it. I have my FMO, which isn't changing each time. It's the same sample. Then I have the different groups changing each time. The LD1s are all here together. The LD2s are all here. LD4, LD12, et cetera. And you can see now I can compare each group against that same FMO control very easily. Perfect. Thanks for learning how to do this with me today. I look forward to learning more next time.